Germany is uh, very active in MOOCs now, and uh, not only in German, in German, but also in English. And this is very interesting, developing platforms, etc. Platforms that other countries can use. This is great. We see normally in our research that the countries that are developing most in open education are the countries that have some sort of, a, of a national policy in one way or another, or have had in the past, you know, be it funding-wise or, or just uh, arguing for it in one way or another for universities. It tends to motivate people, universities, to go ahead and do something about it. Many university managers, I think they are starting to see um, perspectives, you know, where they can go with this type of, uh, of initiative. Um, and we see that certain universities decide to focus on different things, you know. Some of them decide to focus on teaching, teaching methods and explore that. Others start to focus on um, developing courses that will be helpful for the communities they are at, you know. So if it's a more agricultural, rural area, they'll try and open up courses Courses that will be beneficial for the community around that area if their goal is to be locally uh, helpful, let's say. So it's interesting because managers or university um, uh, rectors and vice chancellors, they can really now start seeing um, strategies in which to focus on and see, and see the affordances, let's say, of open education. And yes, we see it happening very often. When we include in open education the dimension of access, for example, then we are talking about lowering, lowering the barriers for studying. That means being able to study without being formally registered, um, being able to study paying no fees or in extreme cases a very small symbolic fee to pay for something that you're getting out of it, be it a certificate or whatever that has some value. Um, it has to do really with opening up pedagogies so one teacher can see how the other teacher teaches perhaps the same subject so they can learn and improve their teaching practices from, from that. It has to do with accessibility, which is different from access, which means um, having content available online in a way that physically challenged people can also study. You know, people who cannot hear or cannot see, you know, if you make content available in a way that is more embracing, you know, that, that is made available in a way that more people can use them. This is really opening up. So there are many different ways to open up education, which goes beyond offering MOOCs and OER. So certainly they are the driving force, they are what we call the core. Content is one of the core dimensions, you know. And then we have what we call the transversal dimensions, everything that gives support for open education to happen. And that's for sure um, uh, the institutional strategies. The institution has to be really supporting the individuals, the teachers, um, uh, and the learners who are part of this process. There are always enablers and challenges for opening up education. One of the enablers that we know that is actually a motivation for opening up education is that universities tend to go more global, they are more visible, let's say. Even if they are already global, uh, because they are putting online their content, they are showing their pedagogical practices, this tend to, tends to bring a lot of attention to the university and quite often it enhances their reputation and of course depending on how good they are. On, on what they're doing. Um, so I'd say that this is normally a motivation for a university because if they show they are doing a good job, they can actually attract more students. Someone goes there, try a course as a taster and say, okay, I like it, I like this teacher, I like the way they teach, I'm going to enroll. So they can actually uh, increase their reputation and attract more students. Normally this is uh, one of the motivations for universities. Also to make knowledge available for free, this is normally in line with their mission. But then there are challenges and we have to say, you know, everything that is new, you know, it's groundbreaking, um, brings challenges. Quite often it, it is to define a business model, how to make it financially sustainable for an institution. We know that uh, often the, the universities invest money in, in um, 
uh, developing MOOCs, for example, you know, in creating platforms for interacting with learners worldwide, etc. But sometimes they find it a bit complicated to find uh, the return in their investment, let's say. We, we know there are very successful models already. Uh, it's up to each institution to decide how they are going about it. Some of them integrate open education into their day-to-day business model, let's say. Others look for funding elsewhere uh, in order to, to find uh, their own model later on. Uh, but we know this is one of the biggest challenges. So at an institutional level, I'd say that finding um, the perfect strategy and the business model at the moment still seems to be one of the main challenges.